Gateway School Board of Directors study session meeting. Today is Tuesday, April 17th at 7.40 p.m. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bonnie, can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Cerucci. Here. Mr. Gottman. Here. Dr. Kalkstein. Here. Mr. Lapsevich. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Mrs. Warning. Here. Has anyone signed up? Oh, he's oh, here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Williams, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were on there. Mr. Williams. <laughs> You probably couldn't see me because Mark just blocked your view. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Bonnie, did anybody sign up to? Um, to we do have two names. Um, are they on the agenda? Or? Uh, Mrs. Tammy Akins. Is this is for agenda items only? The agenda. Be, yes. e, um, this is for agenda items. Yes. Is your topic? I don't have her topic. Is your topic an agenda item? Or is it not agenda? You have to speak at the end. Then. I don't know. The agenda was bullying. Okay, that's not an agenda item, so that would so have, have to wait. Yeah. Have to wait till It'll till be at the end of the meeting. Oh, yeah. At the end. Uh, Scott Gallagher, are you here to speak on an agenda item? No, an agenda. He's at the end also then. So. Okay. 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 Is there anyone here that would wish to speak on an agenda item this evening? Okay, I'm going to say with that there's none, and I'm going to move on to Section 5, which is uh, Dr. Philip Woods is here to present a uh, presentation on our achievement gap. Welcome, Dr. Woods. Good evening. Uh, thank you to the board and the community. Uh, for the new board members, my name is Dr. Woods. Um, I have a can I move bachelor's on? degree. Excuse me. I was going to say, can I move that thing out of the way? Yeah, we can move the podium, and can we just, is there any way to adjust one? Section of Try one of those mics. There you go. That's there we go. Perfect. Yeah. Which way you want to move now? So, Doctor Phillips, you have to be at the podium in order for the mic to pick you up, please. Okay. Okay. No problem. Doctor Chapin's is okay. Right. Thanks, Neil. I just want to once again thank the board and the community for having me tonight. For the new board members, an introduction. My name is Doctor Woods. Uh, a little background about myself, uh, bachelor's degree, elementary education, master's in special education, principal certification and letter of eligibility. I have a doctorate in educational leadership. I'm here today to give an update on our progress towards the, pl the plan to ensure equity for all. Uh, just a little background here. The Achievement Gap Committee was formed in 2016. The Achievement Gap Committee met regularly to discuss tasks and progress and process of where we're going to go in the district as far as uh, the direction of the, the, the equity team. Uh, Cleveland and, uh, and Evergreen were chosen as the schools for the pilot. Just to make an update to the board, Dr. Shakey, uh, Dr. Short, and myself, we did not limit the, 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 the survey or the the research to the two buildings, we have been addressing all four elementary buildings. Um, then I was hired as the equity coordinator, and I have been conducting observations, tours, looking at curriculum, looking at our data. And then ultimately the goal is to have our Gateway School District equity plan completed and implemented to be, implementation to begin. We are still in the process of that. Um, there we go. Embracing diversity. We believe that diversity is one of our greatest strengths at the Gateway School District. Collectively, and I put in capitals, we will continue because it is currently being done. We will continue to pursue an educational environment that is inclusive to all students and make certain that all students are challenged. People misunderstand uh, assessing cultural competency and cultural responsive pedagogy with having empathy or feeling sorry for individuals. It's not about feeling sorry for individuals with their social economics or the background. It's about raising the expectations, having high expectations in achieving the goals and celebrating the goals. The definition of cultural competence is having awareness of one's own culture, identity, and views about differences. I won't bore you and read the whole thing. <laughs> This year, we had a, a, I want to say excellent simply because of the feedback. We had an excellent training with Mr. Justin Brown. He came in and did a, a number of hands-on activities with 
uh, allowed the staff members to get up and interact with individuals they weren't used to. He had to do some hands-on manip manipulatives. We were able to purchase his, his book. It came with the program and a workbook to help us work with our students through these times as far as identity, uh, helping the staff understand working with the students. Going back to the training, the, the things that they went through helped them assess their own cultural competence and awareness of themselves. But before we can reach out and work with our students, we gotta be able to understand ourselves and break down bias. So um, staff members went through a series of exercises to assess their ability, as I said that. The, we had a survey at the end, the, the results were overwhelming, that they were encouraged, they felt comfortable, they felt that the, after the training, they had a better understanding of the process and they were looking forward to more training. The main focus of our plan is teaching and learning through the lens of equity, okay? Now, when we talk about the learning walks, I was able to go through each elementary building. We did the two middle schools. And before each meeting, we met with the principals, the administrators were there. We talked about the strengths and weaknesses of the instructional program. So they gave us some look for us. We went in the classroom. The teachers looked at the feedback through the lens of Danielson. I looked at it through the lens of cultural competence and cultural awareness. There is evidence that the schools are, are cognizant of the grouping of the students. I, I didn't go into one room where there was all one nationality. I didn't go into the room where there was all one gender. You, it was obvious that attention was paid to the grouping and instruction. There was material present in, su in some buildings more so than others as far as cultural awareness, but then again, it, it related to the theme of the month that I was there. Um, we, the focus, once again, is going to be the crosswalk between the Danielson framework and the cultural responsive pedagogy. I slightly touched on cultural, cultural responsive pedagogy, but when we build the team, I want to bring in a couple different uh, programs for CRP. CRP is the acronym for cultural responsive pedagogy because I want to say CRP from here on. I want to bring in a couple individuals and I want the team to decide which program we want. I don't want to pick it because once again, I'm a guest here, I'm a part of the team, but it's, it's your program. So I want you guys to have input in what program we pick. For example, one big demonstrate knowledge of students. If you just look at the Danielson framework of teacher evaluation, a teacher recognizes the value and understanding of students' interests in cultural heritage. When you look at the crosswalk between the CRP model, cultural sensitivity for all students aligning tasks to every, every lives. In my experience as an educator, as a teacher, and now as an administrator, when you bring in a new model or a new training, the first thing they say is, well, how long is it going to be here? Oh, we'll just do this for a couple of months and it's going to go away. So to get this teacher buy-in, we, we're going to make sure they understand this is the Danielson model, this is the CRP model, they're one. It's one. And the training, and as we go forward, it will just mesh. Create an environment of respect and report. Once again, this is the Danielson model, this is the crosswalk from the CRP model. Creating a learning atmosphere in which students and teachers feel respected and connected to one another. If anybody has experience with dealing with not even just children, but groups of individuals, you're going to have more support, you're going to have more buy-in when those members of your team feel a part of the team, when they feel like they're being represented in, in the material, they're being represented in the dialogue, and their opinions and their background is respected. Student engagement, once again, this, was, this is the Danielson model, this is the CEP model. The plan moving forward is we're going to continue to progress, monitor, and ensure success for all. What I talked about during the, during the, uh, the walks in each of the buildings, the principals were able to show me data that they're aware of the strengths and the weaknesses of their, uh, their standards and or curriculum and they were able to identify students who were doing well, who were getting accelerated, and students who required remediation. So it was refreshing to see from one practicing administrator to another that this data is provided and is being provided to the teachers. Additional diversity training. 
you just can't have a one splash and go. So we got to get a couple more, either starting at the end of this year or coming coming in running the beginning. We want some more additional awareness training and implementation imp, implementation of diversity resource. This is just one example when we get into our CRP that will help us intertwine the, the cultural gaps or the gaps in the curriculum with the cultural awareness material slash CRP slash. You could, you could supplement in various ways, guest speakers, field trips, different novels, etc. cetera. Um, equitable education delivery model, we talked about CRP plenty of times, cultural responsive curriculum, sit down with the uh, department heads, look at the curriculum, see what, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, how can we inter, 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 make it interwoven. A problem that people, some people get is that it's February. So we're going to smash multiculturalism in February. You can't just do it in one month. It has to be recognized throughout the year continuously. And then if you want to, you know, go above and beyond in February, that, that is well done. But you just can't go from nothing to here we're doing cook. It's, it doesn't work. All right? I'm just, I'm just being honest. We want to make sure we have accessibility to honors and advanced placements moving forward. We talked about the achievement gap and doing the data analysis. There, there's, there's so many numbers, there's so much data, it could be spun either way. I will tell you that yes, in some buildings there is a gap. I can tell you that the gap is closing with the years going by. Is that my time to stop? No. <laughs> you don't got more time? I can stop if you want. You have as much time as you want. Oh, okay. okay, I'm sorry. Um, there's there's evidence that the gap is is lower. But in the process, just speaking from my own experience, you have traditional students who may not fit the prerequisites. And I'm not speaking ill of teachers, but sometimes they write the prerequisites to eliminate students. But you have a freshman that comes in, falls off track. Sophomore year, they start going. 11th grade, the light bulb comes on. There's no reason why that student should be have accessibility to honors and AP classes if they get recommendations and they're showing that they're making progress. So these are the things that we want to look at. And then I want to increase engaging communities and families. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next step. Once again, establish the district equity team with representatives of each buildings in the community. Some people want this to happen right now. It's a process. It has to take its course. I'm working with Dr. Chegi. I'm working with Dr. Short. We are in communication regularly. We're making sure that we put out a good product. We're not trying to rush. We're not trying to meet anybody's deadlines or anybody's expectations. We're going to do what's right for the district. Um, we want to examine the equal treatment of students. Once again, when we talk about data, you can sit for hours in a room and you can analyze whatever standard or whatever prong that you want. So I did not pay much much energy to this because I was just looking at the, the keys, excuse me, the PSSAs, but that's going to be the next phase. Also, what I would like to do is once we have the team in place, with the help of the team, develop three interview questions so that we can do a qualitative research study to get the qualitative aspect. Numbers, could, numbers are numbers. I want to know how the people feel. I want to know how the teachers feel. I want to know how the parents feel. I want to know how the students feel. So then that way we can create and, and share our plan with input from everyone. That is all I have. Is there any questions from the board? Yeah, I have a question. I don't know how to frame it though. You know, Dr. Phil, thank you very kindly. I, I've been doing my level best to try to wrap my, round, my m mind around what the concept of equity and diversity are. Mm -hmm. You know, Chad picked up that 50-pound financial document. There was a study that came out. I put a whole bunch of tabs in here and asked a lot of questions. The more and more I study this, the more and more I think I don't understand it. But I think you do understand it. So I'm satisfied with you putting your heart, soul, and mind into this and seeing progress. So, uh, you know, um, w what can we do to help me? In other words, I'm probably not the only one that doesn't understand. Let me give you an example of what I don't understand. You can have two regular kids going through school, and then all of a sudden they go through change of life or what's called puberty for kids, and then they, you know, the kid gets bad. So is it a diversity problem? Is it a, a phase that the kid goes through? Is it something the teacher started doing that caused that? So in other words, it's like trying to split a balloon in half. 
how, how can you do it and give half to one and half to another? The act of examining it is not possible for me to do. So, help me. Well, there, you, you created a scenario that you said two kids come to school, one kid makes a wrong turn. There could be a lot of different factors in that exactly. that I would not so like how, to just, how do you just uh, identify ramble on. What I would say is that, one, you want to make sure that anytime a student starts acting out of character or out of their normal program, you get the student assistance program involved, you get the counselor involved, you get the principal involved, you get the, the guidance counselor, you get the home school visitor, see if that student has experienced any trauma, is there, is there a change in the home, is there something going home on in the family the dynamics? Sickness, could be who knows there's exactly. a thousand there's, things. There's a thousand things. I, I'll give you a prime example. Right now we're working for towards our Keystone exam. And I'm sitting down going over my students' uh, st scores and I'm looking at their PSSA scores. They were advanced and proficient all through elementary school. They get to middle school, they start teetering, and then they get to high school and they just fall off the boat. I'm like, what happened? What happened? Were, exactly. There's, it's a heartbreaker for you, for the teachers, the parents. I mean, it's it's a, it's almost like every kid gets an IEP that falls in, in the level of at risk. The the good thing is the district has a program that measures students who their level of being at risk. It goes from attendance, it goes from grades, and it goes from behavior. And uh, I don't know if there's, is there another factor, Dr. Che? Attendance, grades, behavior, and referrals. So, and when the teacher looks at that, a kid gets a rating as far as their level of, of being at risk. Mm -hmm. So, as you said, if you got a kid that was, following the trail and then, and then you got off, they'll come up on the radar and then you put the supports in place. Very good. Okay, thank you very kind. Does anyone else have any questions for Dr. Woods? No? Thank, thank you, you very Woods. much for the update, Dr. Woods. Back? Yes, please. All right. Oh, no. I ain't hit the gym this week. There we go. All right, next on our agenda is Section B, Bills and Financial Reports. Mr. Schott. Uh, this evening we're presenting the Section B1 list of bills for the month of April 2018, the Section B2 monthly financial statements for March 2018, and the Section B3 budget transfers for April 2018. Is there any questions for Mr. Schott? Seeing none, that would be easy for you, Mr. Schott. <clears throat> section C, we have no items previously tabled, so we'll move to Section D, personnel, and we do have some action items this evening. Uh, Mrs. Crump. Thank you, Mr. Rucci. We do have a personnel action item that we are asking the board to vote on this evening. Um, Resolve that the Gateway Board of School Directors accepts and approves the personnel agenda items as listed in Section D for the study session meeting of Tuesday, April 17th, 2018. We are proposing an early retirement incentive program um, for our Gateway School District teachers. Um, the motion will read that the Gateway Board of School Dif Directors approves an early retirement incentive program for qualifying professional certified GEA members at the conclusion of the 17-18 school year. The ERIP is available th to those GEA members who meet the minimum qualifications as specified by June 30th, 2018. They must be at least 60 years of age or have at least 25 years of credited service in the Pennsylvania School Employees Retirement System, which is referred to as PEASERS, and have worked as an employee with a Gateway School District for a minimum of five years and must be vested to receive a pension from the Pennsylvania School Employees Retirement System. Qualifying employees must su submit an irrevocable letter of retirement to my office by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, April 24th. The ERIP will provide the following benefits to these employees. The qualifying retiree may choose from the available standard medical plans provided by the Allegheny County Schools Health Insurance Consortium. Um, the options that they are available to choose from is individual, husband, wife, parent, child, same-sex marriage partners, um, one year of health insurance coverage for every five years of service with the Gateway School District for a maximum not to exceed seven years or until the employee or spouse reaches age 65. Do you want me to read the whole motion? I think that's good. Do you want to vote on one at a time? Yeah, I think so. Can I have a, a motion, please? Uh, so move. Is there a second? For section one, yeah. Is there a second for second. early retirement? Seconded by George. Bonnie, roll call, please. 
Mr. Gottman. Aye. Dr. Kalkstein. Aye. Mr. Lapsevich. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. A letter will be sent out this evening to all the staff notifying them of them. If they have any questions, feel, please feel free to call our office. We will help and assist in any way that we can. Um, section D for next week. We do have listed two resignations, or should I say retirements. We do have two individuals, Patricia Lombard and Kathy Grieve, who have dedicated over 20 years of service each to the Gateway School District as paraprofessionals. On behalf of the district, we would like to wish them the best, thank them for their service. Um, their work with the students is something that each of those families will treasure. Um, so we thank them for that. Under leave of absence, we have two. Transfers, we have two. Under employment opportunities, we are representing two secretaries for approval, a substitute custodian, and under supplemental contracts, we have two listed, advisor for forensics and the head basketball coach. <coughs> under section five, we have three volunteers listed. Are there any questions or comments for Mrs. Crump? I just have one comment to Patty Lombardo. Her and I were the original computer aides that started out back in 1999. So I know it was hard for me to leave, so I just imagine with her being out of the school district completely. So, Patty, good luck and thanks for everything you did. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, Section E Conferences and Conventions. Dr. Shaky. Thank you, Dr. Short. Within Section E tonight, we have four conferences and conventions as listed for review in anticipation of the regular voting meeting. Does anyone have any questions or comments? <clears throat> I assume since it says cost to follow, we'll have the costs for those, Mr. Short. Yes. Okay, seeing no more questions, Section F. Administrative resolutions. We do have some action items here. Dr. Shakey, if you could take uh, item number one and uh, Mr. Shaw, maybe item number two. Uh, for item number one, we have uh, two overnight excursions up for review uh, one to the Future Business Leaders of America and one for the AIM Secondary. Okay. Is there any questions for Mr. Chaky on those two? Seeing none, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Item number two is to approve the hiring of RF Mytel and Associates, Inc. to perform a survey of the Gateway Campus Boulevard property. And the amount of $12,200 is depicted in Exhibit A. Item number three. Approve the hiring of broadband legal strategies to analyze and possibly assist the district with a formal appeal to the Federal Communications Commission for disputed E-rate funding at the hourly rate of $425, not to, not to exceed $8,500 or 20 hours total without further board approval. Item number five, approve the amendment to property schedule number one and the corresponding exhibit A to the current lease agreement with Conica Minolta, Premier Finance, for district copiers and copier maintenance services as depicted in exhibit B. Okay, that's the end of section eight. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Okay. Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? And I have a motion to approve. Section F. So moved. Items one to four. So moved. Second. Second. Second by John. Right. Second by Brian. <coughs> Any further discussion? Thank you. Roll call, Bonnie. Dr. Kalkstein. Aye. Mr. Lapsevich. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. All right, Section F, non action items. Dr. Rossi, could you take item number one and item number two? Sure. Uh, item number one is a 30 day public display for new textbooks. Uh, there are several of them there. The first one is Pearson Ready Gen 2016 for grade two. 
the next three are science materials. Those are our final three. We wanted just to make sure that all three were on there uh, to expedite the, uh, the process uh, so we could have the uh, resources uh, before summer. And then the last one is uh, ESL curriculum. Number two is the East Suburban Sports Medicine Center, tracking sports-related injuries and treatment. Um, <coughs> this information uh, will be used for, uh, for research as outlined in Exhibits A and A-1. Item number three, Mr. Shaw, can you take that one? Sure. Uh, seeking to approve a one-year agreement with ML uh, Master Library schedules for software to be used for, for facility rentals in the amount of $3,600 as depicted in Exhibit B. Item number four, Dr. Shaken. Item number four is a CCAC dual enrollment programs agreement between um, CCAC and the Gateway School District. Thank you, Dr. Short. Item number five is to approve the school services agreement between the Gateway School District and AOT Inc. Associated Occupational Therapists as depicted in Exhibit D. Thank you. Number six, Dr. Chakey. Uh, for item six, we have uh, two more overnight excursions. One, uh, International Sea Perch Competition, and also the uh, PA Junior Classical League. <laughs> Dr. Rossi. Uh, for student teachers, we have four of them listed for the fall 2018 for approval. Facility agreements. Mr. Shockey, take those. Uh, the two agreements listed for Nitro Fast Pitch and WPA Beekeeper Seminar. Number nine. Sure. Item number nine is the annual approval of the various supply bids as listed and as depicted for in Exhibit E for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Next item is seeking the the approval of the continued appointment of Zelmkoski Axelrod as a district's local auditor to perform the required local auditing services and issue the required audit reports for the following three fiscal years at the following fees, 2018-2019, $24,480, 2019-2020, $24,970, and 2020-2021, $25,470, also as depicted in the letter in Exhibit F. Next item is to approve the continuation of the lease agreement with the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number Three for a pre-K K counts program for the lease of one classroom located at the Mossy Middle School for the period of July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2020, in the total amount of $23,400 uh, during the, the two fiscal years 18, 19, 19, 20, and also as depicted in Exhibit G. Next item is to approve the continuation of the lease agreement with the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number Three, the Head Start program for the lease of one classroom located at the Evergreen Elementary School for the period of July 1, 2018, to June 30, 2020, in a total amount of $26,494, and that's depicted in Exhibit H. Next item is to approve the extension of, the, of two rental contracts between Mr. John and the district to provide sanitation services at the Gateway Middle School and at the Gateway Campus Boulevard locations for the rental of three sanitation units in a total monthly amount of $135 per sanitation unit during the 2018 calendar year as depicted in Exhibit I. Next item is to approve the capital reserve fund budget in a projected amount of $1,812,000 the various capital repair and improvement projects contained in the budget, the advertisement of request for proposals for professional capital related services as applicable, and the advertisement of bids for capital projects as applicable to be completed during the 2018-2019 fiscal year. That's depicted in Exhibit J. Next item is to approve the district's purchase and payment of the following two new district vehicles and applicable related accessories during the 17-18 fiscal year. Uh, that's comprised of one 2019 Ford F-250 pickup truck with various accessories listed below with, uh, with a, a, another vendor. And you know, I'm, excuse me, I'll, I'll mention vendors, Day Fleet Commercial Sales for the truck and also for a van, a 2018 Ford Transit 10 passenger van um, in the amount of $27,000. Both those are through the CoStars pre-bid program. Uh, the the uh, 
accessories for the truck are being purchased through Murray Auto Electric and Radio Communications, Inc. Uh, consists of a Meyer snowplow with mountain harness, diamond trail loom top cider truck box, and a power inverter for the new truck, and also from Protex spray liners, the spray and bed liner for the new truck. Again, these will be purchased out of the current 17-18 fiscal year. Also, I'd like to add that uh, at the regular board meeting, we'll be adding an, addition, an additional resolution, specifically addition of the Gateway High School Stadium Scoreboard Purchase Resolution. So again, just wanted to bring that up right now. We'll have that on as an after additional item. All right, questions? That's quite a section up. Quite a list. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Lawson, Mr. On that WCAA beekeeper seminar, um, that's seven thousand three hundred ninety dollars twenty five cents. How many days is who can ask me? How many days does that go on for? It? Mr. Brown here. Mr. Brown, sir. Generally, the past year was Friday evening and Saturday. And um, is this? You have to have custodians and everything in there. Yes. Okay, and they bring the bees in with them? No. <laughs> no, it's an educational <laughs> seminar. Uh, more of a convention that quite a few people from a number of different states actually come. Uh, we're happy to have them. Uh, Mr. Brown, I know we, we had some discussions back and forth about this particular uh, rental, and you had some apprehensions about the, the original pricing and you know we were going to look at the, the fees and things like that with this particular one so i believe there were some things that were the combinations that were made that maybe we didn't account for in the past it, does this number on the agenda tonight reflect a, a change in the it fee or an estimate based on what you know but you're you're, you're comfortable with the number absolutely here. thanks Um, Mr. Rossi, just for the public, the display of the textbooks in Section 1 will be in this room for the next 30 days? Is that uh, where they're kept? Where's the best? Either here or depending on the, the volume of books, um, we could put a table in here or keep them in my office. One of the other. Do they don't yeah. need to make an appointment to come see those? They can just no, do they don't. Do normal business hours to review? Yes. We typically have a display in the sign in. I just want to have materials present for anyone to review. And the he's down, 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 down. Do you have another question? He's got a joke. Certainly not. I'm <laughs> saying no. Uh, about the quarter job. What is ten dollar fee for damaging? How can you damage the quarter job? <laughs> In case you're vandalized. Vandalism. Oh, is that what it's covering? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Vandalism. <laughs> um. The electronic system, is that related to medical record keeping? You can answer that, Mr. Brown. Item two, the East Suburban Sports Medicine Center. See, I know what that is. I talked to the athletic trainer, Chris, about this a bit. Uh, if students get injured, injured, a certain modality is applied. The question is, is one modality better than another? So they de-identify the data and they send them up for analysis so that athletic trainers can increase the level of the competency that they have for treating these various athletes. And it's free. This software is free. Oh, there's no cost associated. Right. That's even better. Um, all we have to do is find one computer on which to put it on. I think we can do it. Yep. Um, overnight excursions for <coughs> perch and junior or classical week. Do we have any estimates on what that costs, Mr. Shaw? Section 6. I haven't seen anything on Nothing. That. We're always happy to send our sea perch crew. We always provide a great competition. Does anyone else have any questions or comments before we move on? This is a long section. Yes. Anyone? Okay. Section G, resolutions by board members. Um, I guess I'll yep. take number one. number one. 
Item number one is to accept the resignation of Mr. Steve O'Donnell, effective immediately. Mr. O'Donnell submitted his letter of resignation to the board and presented on April 3rd, 2018. The letter indicated this would be effective Wednesday, April 4th, 2018 at 4.30 p.m. Mr. O'Donnell's unexpired term runs through the first Monday of December 2019. The board will have 30 days to fill the vacancy from the date they accept his resignation. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Seconded by George. Is there comments or discussion? I just want to say one thing. Um, what Steve did was not was uncalled for. Um, but I don't want let to let it go that Steve did nothing for the district. He did do as far as our building and grounds and everything. But um, like I said, his comments were very uncalled for. So again, I apologize for his comments. Mr. Ritter, I believe you put together some words on behalf of the board. Would you like to share? Well, those? sure. You know, I went into a almost a full page letter on this, trying to figure out the best way to summarize this. Uh, I was awfully confused as to what was going on that evening when an accusation was made against the board member and the board member had a chance to back down and they didn't and it just did not end well. So I was scratching my head like most of the board members for trying to figure out what, what happened, what do we do here? And so mercifully the, um, the, uh, the board concluded right after that and I you know, spent days and days still trying to figure out what happened and why. You know, did, what you know, reading through and reviewing some of the parts of the speeches that were made that night, the, some of the board members were being accused of not stepping forward quickly enough to respond or defend or something like that, I, 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 or apologize on behalf of something that they weren't there to see. I, it was very confusing. So. Uh, after my mind got tired, thinking, trying to think all that through, I tried to get like Dr. Phil to the heart of the issue here. The heart of the issue is that we should treat each other like good neighbors. That's pretty simple. That's exactly what I said about two weeks before that in my board report when I was commending the students for f trying to find a way to what I said was reduce the tension. Remember me doing that? Reduce the tension by going out to the football field and making some sort of an affirmation or proclamation. No more bullying, not here, not us. And the, the students would challenge each other or coach each other, teach each other, hold each other accountable. So I was commending the students for taking what they may not really understand was a step forward to be good civil, you know, to have good civil behavior with one another. Now that didn't occur here in this boardroom. It didn't occur in the intergovernmental meeting. That was a rough, strange meeting. You know, someone from the audience was challenging somebody else on the stage at the time. It was, you know, what should I have done? Apologize for one or the other? I, I, I don't understand that, why people get angry at one another. So the incident that caused all this, I think, occurred because our, my friend, my colleague, Steve O'Donnell, said something stupid like we all <laughs> do from time to time. He had a chance to back down and he didn't. He should have, you know. We all understand that. But what do you do with someone that makes a mistake? Do you turn the other cheek? I think so. Now, if we would do that here at the school, where one student picks on another or something like that, and they turn the other cheek, I would like to go to a school like that. Because kids make mistakes. They get out of line. They say things wrong. Teachers make mistakes. Staff members, board members make mistakes. But shouldn't we turn the other cheek? Isn't that essentially what Mr. Rogers was trying to teach us? through all of the lessons of the office. This is how you be a good neighbor. You understand that your neighbor has weaknesses, failures, and will make mistakes as, as you will. And so the part of the Lord's Prayer says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Forgive us our sins, our debts, our trespasses, our failures. Forgive us. The, like, forgive us that way in the same way that we forgive others. So 
I think that's the right way to proceed here. Now, my hope is that some good comes out of this. I can't see that right now. And that's okay that I can't see it. I am not in control of all this. I'm happy that I'm not in control of this. I am one agent here. We are one board here trying to figure out the level best way to create that umbrella of affirmation, acceptance, being a good neighbor, and being civil. So we stumbled. The public stumbled here. The public stumbled at the intergovernmental meeting. The staff, uh, the board and the staff stumbled here and at the intergovernmental meeting. We're going to do it again. That shouldn't be, we shouldn't war with one another at that. That should be an opportunity to forgive. Now, these are flowery words, Mr. Ritter. I agree they're flowery words, but I put these words into action. When I was a student at Gateway, I got on the bus over to Garden City with some of my friends, and a bully came and just hit me as hard as he can in the face to the degree that my glasses flew against the, the um, school bus window. And I turned to him. He was older, bigger. He said, and I said, I forgive you. First name, last name. I said, um, I forgive you. That's that's the right approach. Isn't that the right approach? Turn the other cheek. Okay, so that's our standard. That would answer a lot of the inequities, the diversity, the arguments, the differences. That would that's the magic glue that could bring us together. That's what we need, right? And so it's with regret that I saw my friend stumble and that he's not here. And so you ask, if, were there any other thoughts? Those are my thoughts. Those are difficult thoughts, but those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anybody else wish to? Um, I just briefly, uh, John, I think what you said had a lot of merit. Um, I think also a very important part of the forgiving process. And like you said, we're all, we're all going to make mistakes. I certainly have. You certainly have. We've all been there. I think the most, one of the most important steps is acknowledging that you made that mistake. And for me, that's what sucked the air out of the room at that last board meeting was not only just a refusal to acknowledge the mistake that was made, but to go on the attack uh, as opposed to actually trying to, to rectify. So uh, that's about, that's the only thing I kind of want to add to, to what, what you said. And it ain't easy. It no. I agree. Well, I would like to add uh, two things, unless anyone else would like to go before me. Um, I would like to add that the board collectively, uh, I think everybody understands, did not support the action or condone anything that was said that night and are deeply regretful and apologetic to the rabbi and the interfaith ministerium and everybody in the community that was offended. Um, and that we, we value the diversity in this community. That's evident by everybody that's here at Gateway. We're all proud of our community and we don't ever want anybody to feel unsafe or belittled or disrespected. And I think moving forward, uh, all of us as adults need to model those qualities that make Gateway great. And then when we do fail, we need to go ahead and exercise forgiveness. And with that, I actually have a letter here that Mr. Donnell O'Donnell had asked uh, to be read. So I'm going to read that. Um, it was addressed to Mr. Williams, but it was sent to the entire board. Uh, it says, Dear Mr. Williams, I have spent the last several days carefully examining my behavior and my comments with respect to Rabbi Simons. At the end of the day, I have taken myself to task and have concluded that my response to the rabbi's letter was completely out of bounds. While I intended to lighten the mood of the moment, it's clear to me now that my comment failed miserably and was completely inconsistent with my intent. Making matters worse, I delivered a mean-spirited and completely inappropriate response at the board meeting when confronted by members of the Monroeville Ministerium. I have reached out to Rabbi Simons and left a message apologizing to her and will continue to try to contact her until I can apologize personally. I also want to apologize to you, Scott, 
as president of the board and to each of my fellow directors, as well as the administration and the district as a whole for my comments and my mismanagement of the situation. The statements that I made at the board last meeting were hurtful, not just to the rabbi, but to the district as well. Again, please accept my sincerest apologies. Respectfully, Steve O'Donnell. With that, I would like to ask for a motion for an action item to accept uh, the resignation of Mr. O'Donnell. We do have a motion and a second already. We do? Oh, we do. That's right. Okay. That was discussion. Can we have a roll call? Mr. Lapsovich. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mrs. Sorucci. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Dr. Kalkstein. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Section two, approval to purchase Gateway Hockey Club team jerseys. Mr. Lapsovich, would you like to begin since that was your initial motion? Yeah. I brought it up the uh, last board meeting that uh, I was at a, a hockey game, which I'm on the sport <coughs> athletic committee, and I never attended a hockey game. And I, it was like their last game of the year, and I said, well, I better get over there. So it happened to be a Sunday evening. I went over when, I, when I, it was in Belmont in the, at, a, at an arena. When I was walking in, I looked up and said, uh, Gateway Hockey um, team. I went inside all across the walls and said, Gateway Hockey. I'm watching guys are enjoying themselves and uh, very enthusiastic what they were doing. But then I looked up and I seen some of their jerseys that were, and I'm thinking to myself, they're representing Gateway. I, I did not like the way they were looking because their shirts were torn, tattered, stained. So I asked who was the, like the treasurer of the um, hockey committee and um, the lady came over and she, I said, how, how old are these jerseys? And the person told me they were, she'll check with me, check. They gave me an answer, they were like 10 or 12 years old. And I understand we have other clubs in there at Gateway. If they have Gateway Gators on their backs or their front representing me as a school board member, they would say, well, we will have to do it for all the clubs. If they're in need, I guarantee you, as long as I'm on this board, I'll find the funds or wherever to help these clubs out or these um, um, unsponsored uh, PIA um, groups. But when they got there, by, they're representing me as a gateway gator and I'm behind them and I'm representing them, I will back them 100%. So that's why I made the motion to purchase new jerseys for this. I understand they get $5,000 a year from our, from our board, but they also have about forty-some thousand dollars in expense every year that they have to have fundraisers and all that. And it's not easy to come up with uh, 4800 or $5,000, whatever these jerseys are going to run. But it's going to be good for them for the next 10 years. So you break that down, it's maybe $500 a year. And I'm proud to ask this board if they would honor my request to buy these boys the new jerseys. Thank you. I actually bought, brought some jerseys again. Mr. Lepsovich had asked uh, me to bring a couple at the last meeting, and nobody really looked at them, so he asked me to bring them again and show them. So I did do that. So we'll just take a minute here. And I'm going to show you guys the current jerseys that Gateway Hockey has. These are from 2008. This is a sample. As you can see, there's an old C and an old A visible where there used to be a patch that was captain and the alternate captain since um, no longer used this year for you know those purposes. Here's another sample of what we're wearing. You can see the many puck stains. Uh, this person took a lot of impact. Uh, a lot of the jerseys are like this, or they have holes in them. And they 
have areas where there were patches uh, on the sides which are gone, the tags are gone. Um, we can't tell what size they are anymore, but that's a, an example of what our gateway gators are wearing to represent our school. Yeah, Mary, good. These are in decent shape compared to the five or six that I've seen some players had on. We have a laundry manager. Would they do anything with doing the laundry of these jerseys? Um, well, currently, the team does their own laundry. Well, I'm um, saying the other teams that we have a laundry manager for. Yeah. Would she be able to take care of the jerseys? I don't. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, they're out of it. They can't do nothing with them. Yeah. Laundering the jerseys. I'm saying is, for laundering the jerseys isn't something they ask. They ask for. Um, I did um, put together some some notes since we're talking about it that might address some of the concerns and questions that come up about this purchase. So. It's not an action item. It's not. It's not an action. No, it's not an action. Okay. No, this is just information for right, the next meeting. Okay. So, Gateway Hockey has been a part of Gateway since 1972. Um, Gateway has always supported hockey one way or another, without a doubt. Uh, these boys certainly represent our school to our surrounding communities, as Mr. Lepsevich indicated. They wear our logo, they use our name, the banner uh, hangs at the wall on Center Ice in Delmont. In fact, the name's even painted on the building at Center Ice. Um, it is my understanding that they're not a school-sponsored sport because they're not part of the WPIAL. And they're not part of the WPIAL because they're not a PIAA sport. I'm learning a lot about all these uh, initials and sports. Uh, so the PIAA is made up of 12 districts across the state. And to be recognized and governed by the PIAA or WPIA, correct me if I'm wrong, athletic committee, you have to have enough hockey teams throughout the state in every single district to have competitions and playoffs that lead to state championships. So hockey is very popular in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, but there are pockets throughout the state where it is not. So that is why it is not a PIAA sport and why it is not a Whipgill sport. So that is why it is a club sport. Uh, the last time the uniforms were purchased for the hockey team was 2008. Uh, I think they got a, a lot of money out of the jersey. That's 10 years old. Our gateway sponsored teams receive new uniforms on a four or five year rotation. Uh, one argument that was brought up uh, to George uh, and myself was that if we do this for the hockey team, we have to do it for all the clubs. Well, hockey's not actually a club, it's a club sport. So I did check with Mr. Rovesti and he confirmed that there is only one other club sport at Gateway, which is bowling. Uh, lacrosse began as a club sport and we voted to fully fund lacrosse in 2017 when I was first on the board and I supported that. I still support that. I think it was the right thing to do. Uh, so that, that's one of the reasons why when I look at this purchase and I think, would I support it? Am I making uh, the right decision by supporting this? And I look back at my vote in 2017 for lacrosse and the answer was yes, absolutely. I supported it then and I supported it now. I mean, I do support it now. Um, lacrosse started here in 2011. Uh, a few years ago, as I mentioned, it, it was transitioned and fully funded by Gateway. And I was just entering the board. And at that time, I remember the meeting. The lacrosse team was here. Coach Washington was here. The budget he presented to Gateway was $37,985. Um, I still had it in my athletic folder. Uh, Gateway now pays the costs of the lacrosse head coach and two assistant coaches. That's at over $11,000 a year. And Gateway budgets $8,000 annually for equipment, as well as $2,500 for transportation. And all this can be found under uh, our web site under the budget for 2016-2017 under the athletics tab. Gateway also funds our cheerleaders and I again agree that we should. Cheerleading is not an official sport however they receive over four thousand dollars annually and they are included in the uniform rotation. The annual operating budget for Gateway Hockey is about forty thousand dollars. That does not include any player equipment. The majority of that fee is ice time and PIHL referee fees. This is a shoestring budget for a hockey team. It gives our hockey team one practice a week to themselves and one shared ice time with the junior high team. 
Tuition for the players this year at the junior high level was $530 a year. And on top of that, they purchased, purchased inexpensive jerseys so that they could be in compliance with the rules required to have a team. Tuition for the high school team was $850. If you compare that to other schools around us, like Penn Trafford, Franklin, Norwin, students pay much more. But they have better teams and they have more practices. And frankly, many of their families can afford to pay $2,000 or more in tuition. But Gateway families cannot afford to pay a higher tuition. Thankfully, there's a strong alumni organization that does an annual golf outing and contributes approximately $3,000 annually to the Gateway hockey team. The district graciously provides $5,000 to the hockey team. All other funds come from fundraising. Keep in mind, Gateway does not pay for any transportation for the hockey team, no trainers, no laundry, and Gateway hockey team pays their own coaches' fees, and every player require, is required to purchase all their own equipment, which consists of pads, helmets, pants, skates, and sticks on top of the tuition fee. A few years ago, Mike Colarusso began a developmental program trying to recruit hockey players in the Gateway School District. The developmental program ha had over 20 kids in it this year from K to sixth grade. And this is the first year in several years there has actually been a junior high hockey team. It had a roster of about 15 kids. The JV team started off this year not knowing if they were going to have a team. They had the bare minimum of 11, but they were able to grow that to 15 players. So there are a lot of families getting involved in Gateway hockey. I would say it is on the upswing without a doubt. Mr. Rovesti has been very supportive at announcing team games and activities at the high school and including them in the pep rally. Dr. Short has been equally supportive and many of us are trying to get Gateway Hockey back on the map, so to speak. The budgets are tight and I think purchasing these jerseys for the kids would help the team image, the reputation, and I think it would help attract new players, not to mention the holes in the stains that you saw. So Mr. Rovesti had asked the team to provide a cost estimate for the jerseys, which is attached in the uh, agenda. It was his recommendation that the team purchase a bit higher quality jersey than that was discussed originally, and that is so that they'll last another hopefully six, eight, to ten years. Um, if these jerseys are kept for ten years, um, as you mentioned, George, it's actually a contribution of about $240 a year to the junior high team and to the high school team. So I'm just asking my board if uh, you will consider next Thursday to put our kids first and get them some hockey jerseys and help support hockey and, and help this program to grow. Thank you. That's all I have. Anybody have any questions on hockey jerseys? Um, just quickly. Um, you know, the minute Mr. Lapsich brought this up, I, I, I'm on my board. I want, to, I want these kids to have you know, the best equipment that we can buy them. But um, as we just have discussed regularly, you know, our budget is currently in a deficit. Um, and if, I think if we want to look at adding new money on, I have no problem approving this or voting to approve this, but I want to know where we're going to whack on the budget to accommodate for it so we're not adding to the the growing deficit. So let me see if I can reiterate what you just said. If we if we are generous and award this, we must be stingy by taking something else away to match it. If we're going to have a balanced budget, yeah. If we're going to have a balanced budget. So the, is that what we want to do? So, so let's Why don't we ask Mr. Shaw, I think he's over there with an answer to that question. Sure. Is there money left over in the athletic budget or would it come from the general fund? We would actually take it from the athletic budget, which is a part of the general fund out of the current fiscal year. Uh, Mr. Ravesti's budget is under uh, budget in terms of year-to-day expenditures to what's budget. And actually, as, as a, um, an additional item, uh, I know Dr. Short and myself and Mr. Ravesti will be taking a look at that under expenditure you know, in comparison to what he's budgeted for in 1819. So we're going to see if there's any other opportunities to take advantage of the budget being under to give us some budgetary relief for 1819. Sure. So. That's my only concern is that we're not going to be piling Just so the it public really knows, um, the quote is for 30 jerseys for home and away, so a total of 60 jerseys. That's 15 for junior high, 15 for high school, and the total cost is $80 a jersey, so the, the quote is $4,800. I'm in all agreement with this, but if we're going to do it for the sports, could we also look for the bowling team? They went to states, and they didn't have a 
gateway gear. So I just feel what we're going to do for one sports club that we should do for all of them. I'm 100% for that. If they need, need something <laughs> in emergency, we'll find them whatever they need. The developmental team. Add that to the number, Mr. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> developmental team. Are they all gateway students? Uh, the majority are, but the developmental program will take kids from outside because they they pay and they want to take players. So we're um, going to put gateway jerseys on. No, that these they, jerseys they are not for them. developmental. Okay. These jerseys are for seventh and eighth grade hockey and nine to twelve hockey. Those are all gateway students. At that age, they're they're required to be on a school team. The developmental program is just a kind of a recruiting program. It's they don't play games. It's more of a learn to skate, learn to play hockey. Okay. okay. It's kind of a way to feed the, the future feed a program. Of game hockey. Yeah. And that's fine as long as we do for one, we do for all. Okay. So we don't. Thank you. See, I'm in agreement with Val. <laughs> no problem getting bowling jerseys. No problem. So do we need to include that with? We'll just have to get a price. We'll have to figure it out, that's all. Well, so. Mr. Robesti, check with them and see. I mean, just initially off the top of my head, I'm thinking whether they would have a preference for T-shirts or Polish shirts, what would be most appropriate for bowling. So. Well, they make like the Charlie Sheen shirts. The <laughs> well, one other question, too. Um, this is going to dig into it, too. Um, we give hockey already 5000 Will we also give money to the bowling team? I know they the went The bowling team gets $1,000 a year. Right. Um, I don't know what their annual operating budget is, though, so I think on a percentage basis, I think out of a $40,000 hockey budget, we give them five. I can't imagine that a bowling annual operating well, I know budget they went, is as much as lacrosse and hockey. I know they went, well, lacrosse is a sport. I know they went to states and they paid their own busing the bowling team when they represent a gateway. So I just want to make sure everything is even across the board for these kids because we paid for the girls' buses to go to the basketball, the boys to go down to football state. So I think we should be, you know, paid for the uh, bowling state's bus. Well, I would have been fair on that. I didn't know the girls went to a bowling uh, championship. States. But if they came and had a legitimate reason that they needed money to, to represent us in the state. I think we're, uh, we have common sense and uh, we're fair here. I think we've been able to find them whatever they needed. Sure, my niece took second at states in bowling, mm -hmm. coached by her dad, my brother Joe, who did it as a volunteer. The 2000, um, in 2012, the 1972 hockey team was inducted into the Hall of Fame. My brother Paul was on that team. So my heart, one more item. The hockey players wear not just jerseys that get dirty and sweaty and loaded with fungus, but they have special pieces that they put on their body and their knees and their thighs, and it, the sweat gets on there. You can't really take some of those put them in the washing machine, it would destroy the wash. They have special ways to clean these and keep these disease free. Nothing so, smells worse than hockey equipment. <clears throat> so it's a difficult mm -hmm. challenge. And that might be part of the reason why they buy their own pads. And clean them, right. Get sweaty and smell. Yeah. Okay, very well. Points taken. Thank you for your time and listening to that. Thank you, George. Thank you, Bob. Where are we on this? So, Mr. Schott, can I reach out to you to touch base with Mr. Avesti regarding bowling trips? No, Mr. Okay, no. thank you. So, Mary Beth, before we leave that, we've got the public listening in. If you have a business and you want to find a way to support some kids, get in touch with George. Yeah, George. Uh, Mr. Find a way to donate. Help the kids out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Section 12 is comments from residents on non-agenda items. Uh, the first person to sign up for that was Mrs. Akins. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Ritter, actually, right now for the words that you said, because you actually really touched me. 
And I really, truly wish this board actually believed in everything that you said. What about the, the sweat on the... I think, she, I think she means about the forgiveness. No, I mean about the fact that we should all be good neighbors. Very good, thank you. We should all be doing what's best for the children and not be favoritism or picking and choosing because that's unfortunately what has happened. So Before I you start, can you state your name you? and, yes. and your and my wife. resident... But you're a resident of Monroeville. Your name and resident. My name is Tammy Akins, and yes, I'm a resident of Monroeville. My children are right there. Tyler Akins, he's in second grade. And Carson Akins, he's in kindergarten. And I want to thank you for finally letting me talk, because it's been a long journey since August 28th of 2017. Um, all of you, well, most of you, I actually sent out an email sent by me, Tammy Akins, on March 29th, 2018, sent by my attorney. So just to make clear, I hope that you received it. If you didn't, I gladly send it to you. I assume that you actually did read the email. It was a five-page letter and that you should be aware of the circumstances and the unreasonable and unfair treatment my children, Tyler Aikens and Carson Aikens and myself, have received from the Gateway School District Administration, more specifically right there, in the school board. And I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to ask some direct questions and I know that I'm probably not going to get answers because that's how it's been for approximately, what, seven months, eight months? A little ridiculous. So the bullying occurred on August 28th, actually August 25th, I take that back. And I went to the, the school and I told the principal and she said it would be handled. Unfortunately, it wasn't handled. Another situation occurred and my son was sobbing on the bus. I asked the bus driver if I could get my son. He absolutely granted me permission. He authorized me. I got on the bus. I got to my child. And at the moment, I actually didn't realize the bus driver told me who the child was, but thank goodness for videotape. And he actually did say who the child was. I was not even close to him. And I asked the child to please leave my son alone. Stop being a bully because we're a no bully zone, right? We're supposed to be not bullies. And I asked him to be kind, just not be a bully, be kind. It was pretty nice, a nice lecture. Unfortunately for some people here, they decided to meddle in my business that wasn't their business. And they tried to cause conflict by going to the superintendent and actually not looking out for my children. Not once has anybody looked out for my children. You keep saying that there's a no bully zone, but yet I was not prepared by you to bully me. I went to the principal, I went to the superintendent, and my children were still in the situation. Nothing got resolved except for the fact that you chose to revoke me from University Park. So the fact is, yes, I got on a bus, never denied it, nor will I. But the fact is, why? Where are you at in the why? Because I don't see any of you taking the accountability and the responsibility that you should. You sit here and dictate that you're Gateway School District and you're looking out for everybody's best interest, but you are not looking out for them. I'm looking out for them. And that's what I've done this whole entire time, is fight all of you who are supposed to be doing what's best for them and yet, here I am. But then you have all these policies. You have the no bully zone. You have, um, oh wait, here's the other thing too that I was kind of interested in. You don't have a policy for a parent getting on a bus. So how am I the guideline? I'm clearly not the first person to ever stand up for their kids, nor will I be the last. So how is it that your remedy, you found it necessary to get me revoked out of my children's school? And then, not revoked, you after, oh, wait, I forgot, you decided to have the police involved too. You had to have the police come to my house and try to press charges and, and all kinds of nonsense. Well, they decided, I didn't do anything wrong. Let's let her go. They didn't even want to be there. They were pressured by you. They let me go, no charges. I go back into my children's school. We're going to pretend like Ms. Hoffner said, everything's going to be okay, nothing's going to happen. We're gonna have a good year. And then here we go again, six weeks later, what do you know, you come back at me again. You are not even actually going after the actual bully. That child was never even addressed until December 1st. August 28th, December 1st, not even the same. So you don't practice your own no bully zone, and you actually come after the mom who's protecting her children because you failed to do your job. 
Then I have to sit there and go back and forth that I'm not allowed in University Park, then I'm allowed in University Park, then I'm not allowed in kindergarten, then I'm just not allowed in second grade because people can't stay out of their own business. They have to get in my business. That's not okay. That is absolutely not okay. And then you have the discipline. So children who bully have disciplinary actions. I'm a parent who was protecting her child. My disciplinary action was to get revoked out of my children's school, but then you claim that you want parent involvement? How does, they're so contradictory, it's ridiculous. So then I have to go out and go get an attorney because none of you will let me speak. And I know you're smiling at me, Ms. Farachi, but I just don't think that's appropriate. I think that's very condescending. And I'm going to say... Actually, I'm you need to wrap it up now. You have about 30 seconds, Mrs. Akins. I am, I'm requesting an apology from all of you to my children. I protected my children. You failed them. Failed them every single step of the way. You failed them at the school. You failed them on the bus. You failed them in this facility right now. And I'm done with it. I'm asking for the remedy of... Uh, the remaining school year to include a refund of a $2,500 retainer fee that it cost me to stand right here. I should not have to do that. It's because of the Gateway School District has neglected and has neglig neglected with my children. You made it perfectly clear since actually three years ago with Tyler, but you actually made it perfectly clear that my children don't matter to you. But they mean everything to me. They mean everything to me, and I will stand here again until you guys get it straight. You can chime, and I'll keep coming back until you get it. Thank you. And I really wish I could respond to that, but I cannot I respond know. to that. Our attorney can respond to that. I don't need to talk to him. I've had enough of him. And he knows that. I guess that means you don't want to talk to me. That means that you are, you berate me and you try to humiliate me in a public setting, and you do not do your job that you sit here and you speak that you do. Mr. Ritter, okay, if you're right on the right, then don't ask me questions. I didn't ask you anything. You just said, do you want to talk to me? No, I said, do you want to talk? If you want to talk with me, come out the hallway afterwards. You're That's not here. what you said. I, I think part of the reason why you, you're hearing the board not responding to these uh, allegations is that there is some pending litigation, and it's I've advised them not to speak on those subjects. I just don't think it's appropriate. Plus, uh, under the Sunshine Law, this period is called public comment, not public debate. And that's what generally you should be doing. You should be commenting to the board about what it is that's on your mind. But it's not a time to begin debates. But for the reason that there's litigation pending, I've advised the board not to respond to this. Reverend Gallagher. <laughs> the, uh, my name is Reverend Scott Gallagher, the uh, Greenleaf Drive. I'm the pastor of Garden City United Methodist Church and a member of the Monroeville Interfaith Ministerium. And I'd like to share the statement on behalf of the, the ministerium. The Monroeville Interfaith Ministerium was shocked by Mr. O'Donnell's response to our request for a public apology to Rabbi Barbara Simons. We've heard his, his written apology shared tonight on his behalf, and sadly not from Mr. Adon himself, but we recognize he's also reached out to Rabbi Barber personally and issued an apology. In the aftermath of Mr. O'Donnell's statement, the Gateway School District community stood together in denouncing those statements, celebrated the beauty of our diversity, and clearly made it known via social media and other avenues that such talk and actions are not accepted in Monroeville. It was also made known by some of the school directors, 
the faculty, both publicly and privately, that Mr. O'Donnell's statements do not reflect the Gateway School Board of Directors or the Gateway School District. Very glad to hear the uh, unified statement, Ms. Ms. Cerucci. I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. All right. The, uh, distancing yourselves from Mr. O'Donnell's statements. We wish to share our appreciation and thankfulness that we live in a community that is not only diverse, but embraces our diversity. We'd also like to thank the school board members who were able to attend a lunch and conversation with the members of the ministerium. During our time together, we were able to begin the healing process for ourselves and the community we mutually serve. We're aware that healing takes time and effort, and the ministerium is willing to invest our efforts in this endeavor. One such way that our community, we're holding a community discussion on religious garb investments to help clear up some of the confusion about what we wear and our different faiths and the reason why we wear that, that'll be on May the 10th, 7 p.m. at the Monroeville Library. More information will be coming out. We also acknowledge that we have much work to do to ensure that the diversity in our community and schools reflected in the representation of our leadership, our decision making, and our future plans. In order to assist in continuing the healing process and to achieve the goal we have in common, the Ministerium offers itself as a resource to the school board through conversation, presence, and mutual accountability. That concludes the statement on behalf of the Ministerium. I would like to personally share that it was a refreshing conversation and a response that we got from the invitation was great. The, uh, I'd also just like to, to quickly state that um, Rabbi Barber did turn the other cheek that night twice. Yeah. She did offer forgiveness and pointed out the offense and gave opportunity. We have to be cl clear that this is my statement, not the ministerium's. Anti-Semitism and racism are often excused away as just stupid comments or inappropriate jokes, leaving the victim with the onus to forgive rather than holding the offender to account. I don't think, Mr. Ritter, that was your intent. Yeah, but it's a dangerous slope that we stand upon whenever we excuse away another person's actions. As a white Protestant male, it's been a long journey for me to learn, and I am still learning. And the ministerium is here to help anyone in the midst of this conversation. We're not adversaries. We are together in the community. Thank you, Thank you Reverend Gallagher. Was there anyone else in the audience who would like to comment? Those are adjourned. It won't take long. My name is Kenneth Houston now uh, at 108 Edgeman Drive in Roville, Pennsylvania. I'm president of Allegheny East NAACP. We now cover eight municipalities. And ask me, do I want to do it again? No. Um, I want to first of all thank uh, Dr. Short. Uh, for attending our pancake breakfast. He was uh, very eloquent in what he wanted us to know what's going on with you all in the district. Um, I have not personally been able to see you all since last year. I'm still bald and I still dye my beard. And um, I'm hoping that you all are doing well. Uh, two things I want to say. Um, Not that I'm defending an individual for their wrongdoing, but Dr. Martin Luther King made a very, very interesting point. He said, the measure of a man is not determined where he stands during a time of comfort and convenience, but where he stands during adversal times. I think that we need to go out of our way to be sensitive to each other as human beings. I get a lot of calls about racism and racist remarks. And I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist. We all know it does. But we also have to be mindful that we should not label someone as a racist just to say it. It's a dangerous word. A person can make a stupid comment but that does not deem them a racist. I think that the sensitivity given the situation 
around the former school board member was very, very, very troubling for me. And I intentionally would not address the media and they parked right outside my house. It's kind of intimidating to see the lights hit your house and newscasters outside, but I wouldn't comment and I intentionally didn't comment because I love the school district in which my 10 year old son attends. And I felt it would be extremely inflammatory to try to comment on something that would just hurt the children in the district as a whole. If we go out of our way to be kind to each other and respect each other's differences in opinions, it makes all the difference in the world. I had to learn that. Um, I have not always agreed with all of you. You know that. But I have learned to go into my prayer closet and have a talk with Jesus because I am a Christian and repent of some of the things that I say and do. So I'm just asking you that even though I know that this individual said some very hurtful things, he's still a child of God and he's still a human being. And we should love him with the love of whoever your higher power is and forgive him for his letter of forgiveness. That makes all the difference in the world. It's important. And I'm learning as, I've, as I'm getting older. I'm not telling you how old I am. None of your business. But life is too short. When you look up, you're old. And you're on the other side of the mountain. Be kind to each other. Respect each other. You don't have to always agree. Politics is not evil. It's people that make politics evil. Be mindful of that. I know Rabbi Barbara, she's a beautiful person. I've sat in her office and we've talked many times and never at any point did I ever question her love and her concern for the community. But I can also say that about Mr. O'Donnell. Steve kept his word to me every time I talked to him. And he never once told me I will not talk to you. So for that, I appeal to you to show mercy. Don't let this cloud hover over us as a district and as a people. It's too important. Our children need to see examples that are set by us. That makes the difference. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Houston. Mr. Steubenbord. Chad Steubenbord, president of Monroeville. I will tread <coughs> extremely lightly here, um, as I understand and well, am well informed of litigation uh, going on about the previous speaker. So I will speak in generalities. Um, however, I, I think I would be wrong if I sat here silent um, as people were just put on blast um, without true information being out there. Um, if it wasn't for media being here, I probably would not speak, but I don't want this to give Gateway a black eye, um, an alumni of Gateway, and I would um, like to defend the district on, on this matter. So I will simply say that dates that were given, um, just so everyone is aware, that would be the first day of school that this occurred and it was not handled by the second day of school. Um, I will state that it is illegal to enter a bus. Um, the video of the incident is discoverable under Right to Know, the Freedom of Information Act. If anyone in the public would like to view the video, I won't speak any more to that. Um, so I just want people to understand that there are things in place, there are times and there's processes in place, and it's not fair to come up here and blast one individual or board members or administrators um, for, for what one believes to be an inaction based off of the first day or the second day of school. So I do want to say that. Um, I will also offer an apology, um, not to anyone specifically, again, speaking in generalities, but to any child that is used as a pawn um, in asking for an apology. So if, if that has occurred to anyone out there, I am sorry, because that is not right for a parent, for a board member, for an administrator to use a child as a pawn. That's not what we're here to do. Um, so. I'll just leave it at that, but I did want to at least clear the air a little bit on understanding that there is a very clear other side of this coin 
and I, I don't want to see Gateway receive a black eye over this. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Stubenport. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on non-agenda items this evening? Seeing none, we still have our board report. And we have an executive session. All right, unless there's any administrative reports that need to be addressed. Uh, we can handle it at the uh, regular voting meeting. Okay. All right, the board, um, I'm going to seek a motion in a moment for us to adjourn to an executive session to discuss contract negotiations. And then on the completion of that executive session, we will adjourn for the evening. And, no votes, no and there will be no further votes or business taken this evening. Make a motion to adjourn. Can I have a motion no. for an executive session, please? Well, what about the musical Fiddler on the Roof? Am I allowed to say that there's a few tickets still available? So please go see the Teviev. And enjoy him. Can I have a second for an executive session? Second. Yes. second by Jesse. Thank you. Yeah.